If you have never heard of the congressman from Louisiana or his role in efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election or his extreme views on abortion or his crazy views on medical care for young trans people, for instance, don't worry. Here is a brief introduction. The slates of electors produced under those modified laws are thus unconstitutional. They're invalid on their face. That's just the, the conclusion that you have to reach. The very subject of this hearing is an outrage. Abortion care, the stated topic today, is of course an oxymoron. Whether it's by scalpel or by social coercion from teachers, professors, administrators, and left-wing media, it's an aggressive attempt to transition the young people of our children, uh, of our country. House Republicans were unanimous in their support of Johnson, even the folks that said they wouldn't vote for Jim Jordan because he wouldn't say that Joe Biden won the 2020 election. Maybe they are just still reeling after eight members successfully toppled former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. I, I just want to know how long y'all think this unity amongst the caucus is going to last. Can Speaker Mike Johnson control the raucous caucus? Well, joining me now are two former House members from Pennsylvania, former Democratic Congressman Connor Lamb and former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent. Oh, Congressman Dent, now you... Oh, what happened here? How did Mike Johnson get the gavel? I think it was simply a matter of sheer exhaust, exhaustion. Mm -hmm. uh, they went through four or five people. Uh, Johnson came in without a whole lot of enemies, not a very well-known entity, you know, outside of the outside of his own conference. Uh, and I think that's simply how Johnson got it. Uh, not that he was the preferred choice, uh, as you just pointed out in your lead up. You know, his positions are very, very conservative on issues like abortion rights, on LGBT, and certainly the role he played in the 2020 election. So I'm sure the Democrats are salivating over where, where he stands. But frankly, it was all about exhaustion. I don't think they wanted any more fighting, and they just settled on Johnson. And they're just going to hope for the best, knowing that the Democrats are going to spend a lot of time and money now uh, defining uh, Mike Johnson in ways that will not help Republicans in many of those swing districts that Biden won. Yeah, yeah. Congressman Lamb, this was this was an ugly battle within the, the House conference, for, uh, the Republican conference. How do you think Democrats in the House and also Democrats that are specifically everyone in the House is up for reelection? So how could they use that to their advantage come 2024? I think there's a few ways, some visible and not visible. Um, one of the less visible is the fact that Mike Johnson doesn't have the stature to raise funds to support his candidates the way that a Nancy Pelosi did or even that a Kevin McCarthy did. Um, you know, so the Republican running in my old district, for example, would really be counting on Mike Johnson to get out there and raise money to support him and allow him to take on an incumbent. Um, Mike just he doesn't have the stature for that. It's going to take him too long to try to get to that level. I also think he has no experience or qualifications to be in this job. So he's going to screw it up. And those screw ups could end in a government shutdown. They could end in a lot of embarrassing things for House Republicans the way they have all year. And that's going to make all of their candidates look bad everywhere around the country. I mean, to to put a finer point on what uh, the congressman is saying, Congressman Dent, I mean, Mike Johnson has only ever raised $5 million his entire career. To put that in context, Kevin McCarthy transferred $18.7 million of his own campaign cash to House Republicans just this year. So, like, the numbers, the math is not mathing, as I've been saying. Here's the thing about Johnson. He sounds normal and nice, and he will say the craziest things with just the most mild-mannered, milquetoast tone. That might fly on a, in a committee hearing or on the podcast he and his wife used to host or, you know, sitting on C-SPAN answering calls from the callers in the middle of the day. But what about when it comes time to negotiate? There is a funding deadline coming up. November 17th is right around the corner. Well, no question about that. Yeah, certainly Mike Johnson is moderate in tone, not in his policies. And this is why this why Mike Johnson is untested. Uh, he really hasn't been part of these negotiations and not the type of guy who would ordinarily be supportive of these types of agreements. So he did support the debt ceiling agreement. He did not support the recent continuing resolution. So we'll see if he, uh, try, over these next few days, simply tries to accommodate the hard right within the House GOP conference as the clock ticks towards November 17th. Because I think he's a smart guy. He knows that he must cut a deal and he must cut it fast and he's going to need Democratic help. Uh, the question is, when will he discover that? Uh, and I think it will be before or after a shutdown. And on the fundraising point that you mentioned, 
One of the great challenges for him will be the Congressional Leadership Fund, or the CLF, which is really the super PAC for House Republicans, uh, known to be associated with Kevin McCarthy. Will that infrastructure transfer over uh, to Johnson seamlessly? I don't know that. And also the C-suite, the corporate suite, is probably going to be a little bit anxious right now because of Mike Johnson's positions on LGBT and especially the election uh, denial. Uh, that could be also uh, a hindrance to him on the fundraising score. I mean, he was a he was a cheerleader for election denial. Congressman Lamb, I have just a little a short amount of time left. What do you say to Democrats out there who are seeing statements from members of Congress, from the president, saying they're willing to work with Johnson after they're hearing all of these crazy things about him? What do you say to folks that are like, see, this is what's wrong with Congress. This is what's wrong with Washington. Well, in general, I found that even our Democratic voters send us there to do our job. They expect us to pass bills, and they definitely expect us to keep the government open. So uh, I think Leader Jeffries and the White House have been doing a great job of both speaking about their values. You know, they're not speaking about bipartisanship or compromise in isolation. They're saying that they want compromise and bipartisanship for the purpose of enacting our values, which are simply keeping the government open so that we can do all the jobs that people need and funding Israel and the rest of it. So I think they're doing a good job. Former Pennsylvania Congressman Connor Lamb and Charlie Dent, thank you both. <laughs>